My inspiration came from years of always wanting to make a supernatural film. I've always liked the genre, and I've always liked scary movies, but I didn't like the ones that、um, the slice and dice. I didn't like the ones that so, where so many people、uh, got killed. So I wanted to make something different that had、uh, social relevance, and so I decided to do one where the antagonist. Is racism, and that became my inspiration. And from there, I was able to develop it and develop it, and take the years of how I felt as being a black person in this country, and take that voice that is often very, very tiny but wants to be heard, and to put that into something creative, into a creative format, and that became the inspiration. For independent films, the casting has to look at many, many different things. I mean, casting is, has to look at different things, even for Hollywood films, but especially for independent films. First, you have to have someone who's comfortable with the material. Then you have to have someone who can pull it off, who's believable. Then you have to have someone who you can work around their availability.、Um, my actors、um, have had day jobs, and so we shot on the weekends, and it was a three-day weekend: Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And then we would alternate. The next weekend would be Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. Then you had to have someone who、um, just really was a, a, a team player, and that's really important with this type of subject matter. So my lead of Ginger, I was very, very lucky in getting the actress that I got because Ginger had to be, she had to be beautiful, sophisticated, elegant, but also in denial on race and racism, and she's African American, and her husband Hal. Um, he's white, and he has to、um, come from a family that's somewhat affluent, has southern roots, but has a very, very、uh, secret, secretive side. So、um, I was very, very fortunate with the cast that I got, and、um, they gave some really wonderful performances in this genre. And、um, I think they they do good in other genres too. But I was very pleased with them. I didn't try to overcome the emotional aspect of this subject matter. I embraced it. I embraced it, and I pulled upon it. We have a couple of flashbacks into slavery, so I was able to tap into it. There's one scene where、um, I even had to cry. I, you know, I started crying some when we did the flashback into slavery because I saw my mother in one of the characters. And I just thought, what, what could have been like, or what did it, what could have felt like if my mother was in chains, and she wanted to reach out and hug me and protect me, and she couldn't.、Um, so I embraced it, and I took that, and I, I, I put it into it. It's a contemporary film, so it, it deals with present day subject matters, but racism in this country is still present day. It's still contemporary. But our history, our legacy of of, of slavery,、um, is a part of of a lot of black people, whether it's conscious or subconscious, and is a part of non-black people too, in a whole different kind of way. So I tapped into it instead of、um, staying away from it. I embraced it, and I let those spirits come through me, and um, um, try to work through me. So yeah, I I, I just embraced it. There were many challenges, <laughs> you know. When you do a, 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 a independent film, and、um, especially in a, in a genre that a lot of filmmakers have not dived into, see, there are a lot of horror films out there, and there are a lot of、um, films, or、um, you know, supernatural thrillers, and there are a lot of films,、um, slice and dice films. But in terms of something that deals with race and racism, there aren't a lot. So we had a lot of challenges. I would say our Main challenge was、um, well. First of all, it takes place in one location. So, and but the owners of the f- of the house were there, and so we didn't want to, you know, take it too, too, too to the extreme. Even though I could have taken it to a, n- a far more extreme.、Um, so, working around working around this kind of subject matter with the homeowners being there, that was a challenge. Secondly, I had to end up being my own DP. I didn't expect that to happen, but we had to keep moving. So shooting it and directing it, and I've never done anything in this genre before. So shooting it and directing it,
um, that was a challenge. And then also working with a lot of uh, young people who, well, I, I don't want to say a lot, but working with a, uh, the crew, many of them had not even worked on a crew before. So you want to make a film that opens doors, but you have you know, a crew where a lot of them had, don't have that kind of experience. So it was a lot of training as we were going. Um, so we had those type of challenges. And so, you know, I mean, those are the standard independent filmmaker challenges, but you would just kind of hope that you don't have to have them film after film after film. But we had a good team of people, the crew and the cast. They were really, really team players. You know, we pulled together. I didn't know them. They were the, the crew. They were just strangers. But it was our love for cinema that brought us together. And they were um, of all different races. We had, you know, a, a whites and we had um, um, Mexicans and um, uh, one Asian um, and um, some black crew, young people. They were all young people that responded to the ads. And they were like, hey, I'm down. You know, you want to do something on the subject matter? I let them read the script first to make sure they were comfortable because I didn't want anyone coming saying, wait a minute, I didn't know we were doing that kind of film. So they read the script and um, I didn't lose a single person. Um, so yeah, the, yeah, so that was good. Well, the soundtrack um, I was really, really fortunate with. Um, I got a young guy who just graduated from music school and he's from the East Coast. He read the, um, the Craigslist at also, and he scored the film. And it was a learning experience for me, and um, probably for him too, even though he's done a lot in school. Because I didn't want the uh, traditional Alfred Hitchcock type of high strings throughout the entire film. We do have that in some places, but not through the entire film. And I wanted some music to be um, asymmetrical and off beat and of lower tones and slow and strange and um, having that kind of, um, and I don't want to say, it, it, I think I felt that that would appeal to black music, I mean, black moviegoers more, to hear the, the lower tones. And so he had to go back to the drawing board and back to the drawing board, but then he got it. And he created some very, very interesting, non-traditional kind of uh, music for it. Um, and so that was um, a really, really good experience. And I also ended up doing the um, sound design, which I had not planned on, but it just worked out that I did it. And I learned so much. And I recommend that filmmakers, even if it's a short, even if it's just a scene, do your own sound design from time to time. Because it really, we hear a lot that, that the audio, the sound is half of the picture. It really, really is. It took it to another level. And I learned so much by doing my own sound design. Because I had to put in the scary footsteps myself. I had to put in the door creeping and, 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 and closing myself. I had to put in the screams and the echoes myself. And so it became like another character into the world of the supernatural. Um, and had I just handed the film over to someone, I would have just sat back and approved it and, and, you know, and, and of what I like. But I wouldn't have had to go there and really start getting to why is this character hearing this and how does it affect her? And why is this character hearing this and how does it affect him? Um, so that was a very fascinating uh, challenge and part of it, doing my own sound design and I, I really enjoyed it. This film is extremely relevant to today's market. Race and racism is just as much of an issue as it's always been. And I think films that, sh that get people to talk about it in non-traditional ways are always going to be important. And since the lead is an African-American woman, it also deals with the exploitation of black women. Um, so that's important how much black women have given, you know, and, and gotten very little back for it. And that's what is going on with my, with my lead. She's giving and giving and giving, whereas her husband is just there to take and take and take from her. And she doesn't realize it until it's really too late. And because they always tiptoed around race and racism. And so it poses a question, if, you don't, if you're in an interracial marriage, or even if you just have white friends, if you don't talk about race and racism in this world, you may have to talk about it in the spirit world. So either at some point you, you will have to face that ism. We can't just hide these isms and just say, oh, well, it'll, I'll never have to deal with it, either in this world or the next. And that's the, the question that, that's the dilemma that the film poses to them. 
I believe that Hollywood is really, really lacking in terms of the advancements of black women directors, specifically for the big screen. Now, it is much better, the statistics are much better for television, but for the big screen, they are really, really far behind. And when you can name the female, the black women directors on one hand, that's a problem. There's so many white male directors, I can't name all of them, but the fact that you can name them, and Ava DuVernay has only really been established for the last couple of years. So prior to her, there might have been, what, four <laughs> black women directors who were um, uh, consistently, and consistent is subject to uh, you know, your interpretation, whenever they could get uh, the money to do a project. Um, so Hollywood has a lot, a, a, a really, really, um, a lot to accomplish when it comes to black women. So the, the whole Me Too movement, which is very, very important, but it should not only just look at sexual harassment, but also racial denial. Me Too, I'm a part of Me Too in a whole different way because my skin Me Too is dark. And because of that, I'm not given the opportunities that um, a white guy or, or, or a white woman would have gotten by now. But, um, but the public also has to support these films because in the end it is a business. And women, for the most part, we think differently than men. And that's one reason why to this day, I think it's difficult to see a female Quentin Tarantino because a lot of times women may say, okay, I'll put in a few killings, but it kind of, for a lot of us, you know, knots our stomach if it's gonna be, if you have to direct 25 or 15 people getting killed every 10 or 15 minutes. Um, whereas a lot of men may say, sure, let's do that, it'll make money, and it does. And so that's the dilemma that women are facing in, for theatrical films. Like I said, TV's different, and I'm not into TV, so I don't really know as much of the statistics. But if someone is gonna write a check for $10 million or $20 million, which is still a lot of money, even though in Hollywood it's a small budget now, they want to get a chance of making back two to three times that budget, which means it needs to make back 20 to, I mean, um, um, 60 to 80 million or more. And a male director can a lot of times hit that. They can bring that. But the female director may not as readily bring that back. And a lot of it is because of how we think. So the question is now, in order to become movers and shakers, uh, important directors, do we have to start embracing those scripts that um, do exploit the, the human nature, do exploit the human experience? Or are we just gonna continue just being uh, directors of the nice, feel good story, and if it makes a profit, fine, and if it doesn't, well, that's the womanly thing, that's what you expect. So it's gonna be, it's an interesting dilemma as to what's gonna happen to female directors, because the statistics aren't very good for black women still. You know, they just really aren't because they're just only about a handful. And I think if you look at, and I like to gauge going back to She's Gotta Have It, Spike Lee, She's Gotta Have It, because that was when I think a lot of black filmmakers thought it's going to open up for us. But what has happened to black women starting with She's Gotta Have It? There really has not been that many that have been included. So like I said, the Me Too is also in denial of opportunities. When you're looking at an industry where 30 to 50 years later still only has about five people, that's me too also. You know, five in terms of directors, five people as working directors of theatrical films. My opinion on what I'd like to do in this industry, it's really going to be mixed. It is a business and I do want to deliver money. I do want to make money for um, whoever puts up the money but I don't want to turn around and I feel like I've just not so much sold out, but purchased in, but you, we do have to kind of purchase in. Some of us are going to have to purchase in in order to open the doors for other people. So now in terms of my film, there are going to be some people who thinks that I um, compromise too much. I felt that I didn't take it to the extreme enough. Perhaps it could have gone into a much stranger um, zone. It could have gone, but, um, and, but I did not want to exploit racism. I wanted to, I, did, I wanted to honor the ancestors. And that's tricky because it's so much easier to um, exploit the ancestors. It's so much easier. Um, so that's going to be 
a little, it's, it's going to be kind of like walking the tight rope. It's not going to be that easy because I am attracted to more cutting edge type of things. I'm not really attracted to the nice, sweet love stories that a lot of women are. And those are good films. I'm not trying to knock them, but I am attracted to things that have more of a bite to them. Um, and so more of the, the projects that men are attracted to, I am attracted to those projects, but those projects are okay for men to make. But when a woman makes them, it's like, Oh, a no, no. So I'm not sure what's going to happen. <laughs> you know, I'll have to see. Um, but I probably will have to go more to the edge, more to the commercial extreme in order to get in, in order to uh, get a foot in. Because it's hard to get a foot in doing those wholesome stories all the time. It's, it's just difficult to really move up and to become, to move up in that. If I had to describe my film in three words, I would say racism equals horror. 